So in my talk, I'll just uh, start with how to find an idea for these uh, like a machine learning uh, homophone encryption applications. So this is a white paper written by the, uh, in two years ago, written also in Redmond. We have uh, experts from healthcare, we have uh, NIH government representatives, and we also have uh, like cryptographers. We have uh, people from academia, from industry, and all together we wrote three white papers. One is for the API standardization, one is for security standardization, which I already showed how to choose the security parameters. And this is another one. This is the white paper about the applications. And in that, uh, you can find those white papers on homomorphincryption.org. And in that document, we have, uh, we cover a lot of uh, domains where privacy is a, uh, uh, is a big issue and uh, either a government or industry are looking for solutions. For example, here you see genomics, health, uh, national security, education, these are all just domains. And uh, there are some sample topics, for example, genomic matchmaker. That was uh, the, my, my first slide yesterday, that's uh, uh, find your relatives without reviewing your DNA. It's, uh, that's kind of a matchmaker. Or detecting your disease. Or also uh, precision medicine that you have certain disease and they want to build a medicine for you based on your DNA. It's a kind of advanced technique that requires your personal information. If you want to hide your DNA, it's not possible, but maybe it's possible with homework encryption or some other techniques. And for example, education, school dropouts. Does anyone know that there's an issue about these? Yeah. So uh, it's amazing, like that, that was really new to me. I'm glad some of you actually know this. So people just, kids drop out of school for all kinds of reasons. How do we help them to get back to school? And uh, you need to get into their family background, their health issues, their family's health issues, their financial status, all kinds of reasons, neighborhood. Uh, those are kind of private to the person. So if you can find a way to, keep those things private to themselves while you can give them a good suggestion to help them, uh, or at least analyze the reason why people drop out of school. Uh, it's pretty good. And uh, uh, the government actually tried to work on that with, with maybe crypto experts or some uh, other people from insecurity or uh, policymakers, and they tried to make it out, uh, work it out. And uh, also social security, I think there was a there might be a funding, a research funding previously that they want to do social security report uh, like on the encrypted data. Uh, that was like a really good funding that you can apply and get money for. Uh, it's a research topic. It's not, it's not do, uh, undoable. It seems easy to construct. The, uh, the cost might be heavy. You just need to reduce the cost. So these are all ideas that's uh, applicable. When you are looking for your ideas, you can just think about all these industries, uh, your daily life, where you can find uh, like which part of privacy issue you, you're like, concerned about. Let's say you're playing games, you're chatting with your friend over the games. Uh, what, if the game, uh, what if the game company records your like, chatting? It's pretty bad. Have you watched uh, Silicon Valley recently? So? <laughs> <laughs> Another way is you can find those from news. There are a lot of breakouts from the news. Uh, for example, th this is a really good example. The Strava, the company, they have the fitness tracking app, and they release the heat, heat map of the public uh, data. So for example, if you do a run uh, around your house, you, there's a run, uh, shiny circle. If like a, a million people running a marathon, there's a giant heat map there, uh, only if you're wearing the, the, the fitness band, things like that. However, they review human activities in, in Afghanistan, and those are U.S. military bases. Uh, there was, this was a big issue, and uh, see, the problem is just not about national security. Uh, also, of course, you cannot be, uh, there's, it's bad to the company because there's no further murder or accusation by a like, foreign entity, and uh, the company knows everything about you if they have the data. Doesn't mean that they want to do anything about it, but they can if they want to. And also, if there's an attacker, access a database, or some mean friend of you who work there, 
try to get to the database. They can know your daily, the daily commute route, where to find you, things like that. And of course, uh, in an evil way, I can try to sell you more uh, better ads. I say, you're running, I just pop out, okay, there's a Starbucks right here. Uh, do, don't you want to make a stop? Or I can give you coupons, things like that. And uh, also there are other things to be collected, like heart rates. Maybe different from these, there are also IoT devices, some new technology. For example, at home you have a personal doctor that monitors your health measurement, they say heart rate, blood pressure, uh, all kind of um, matters. And uh, they send those things to the cloud server and do computation. Uh, they predict you that, okay, you are in a pretty bad condition lately, you should go see a doctor. Or you're pretty good, don't worry about it. Uh, things like that. Those data, if they're not protected, is a kind of violation of your privacy. And you don't want that. And uh, you can find a lot of these examples from the news. And if you find the news that we never heard of, or you create a good solution that we have never heard of, uh, it's a novelty. And then what are solutions? So naively, you can turn off the data sharing, but it doesn't always work. For example, uh, this is also from the news, a Turkish soldier, he was in Syria, he posted an Instagram picture without, uh, without disabling the GPS location. So people know, okay, here's the Turkish military, they are moving here, and there's a lot of consequences that I don't need to go deeper there. And, uh, or if you turn off the data sharing by default, <coughs> Then people, if they don't open that, and if, they, if you don't turn it on, then how do you know your daily analysis? Like, how was my run? How, how, how has that, like, how was my access for the past month or past year? Things like that. The, those data are gone. <clears throat> or take down hidden map. Uh, the data seem to be private, but they are still collected, stored there. It doesn't solve the issue from fundamentally. And, uh, Disable selected area. I just kind of dumb that you see in the middle of nowhere in a desert. You, you you don't see anything here just because you know something was there. <laughs> and uh, reduce accuracy. I uh, think reduce accuracy is uh, chosen by like Airbnb. For example, you don't show the exact location of the house. You just show okay, this house might be within ten blocks here. Things like that. But this might not work for fitness app because you really want to see your daily road. You, you just run for maybe 20 blocks in total. And uh, at last, you can encrypt your data. Uh, I'm not talking about homomorph encryption yet. It just encrypt the data and it can be any kind of encryption. Uh, this should work, but uh, this should work. But how does the service provider perform this analysis for you? Without analysis, the the uh, Strava has no strengths. You can choose any vendors. They might have insightful status for you, good visualization tools. That's the reason why you choose their company. So from a service provider's consideration, they want to process your data. And also they don't want to collect the raw data. They want to encrypt them. They want you to encrypt them. And then uh, three very typical solutions in cryptography. The first one is not in cryptography. Uh, it's uh, Intel, Intel SGX or trusted in, uh, exe uh, execution environment. These things are not cryptographic secure, but they do give you a, a secure environment where the machine can decrypt the messages, do a computation, encrypt them again, and send it out. During uh, these messages, after during the decryption and encryption, like no one can see those data because they they happen in a secured environment. It's like you have a black box here. Things are done inside. You have no ways to look into that. Uh, but there are ways. For example, people have side channel attacks. And they many research have been you know uh, released in the past few years. Uh, and also, there's a master key, master key from Intel that if, uh, for some extreme reasons, uh, Intel can be, let's say, caught by, the, uh, caught by a judge. They say, give me the key, because we really, really need that data. So Intel cannot refuse that. And at that moment, you lose your like, data, or privacy, or security. And also, there are some hardware limitations about design of Intel SJX, but we don't need to go deeper in that. Um, 
I would say Intel SGX is good. Uh, it's a good technology to make these kind of things happen. You can do encryption and computation, but it's not uh, ideal. It's, uh, it's not like a perfect design. There are some loopholes that you constantly need to fix. And there's limitation on the computation and the, the memory size. So when you're comparing homomorphic encryption to Intel SGX, I would say they are both fine to use, but homomorphic encryption give you provable security. And compared to MPC, uh, it's uh, in the other side. So MPC is also cryptography secure, uh, but compared to HE, MPC requires more communication. You, uh, for some models, you need to uh, stay online for a little bit longer. Your data sharing will be a little bit more. But HE, uh, you can stay online just for once, upload your data, and later download your data. Uh, you encrypt everything, send it over, you're done with it. The, the server will do the processing, return your result, you get it. It's simpler in most of scenarios. And uh, if you're using it correctly, the Communi communication cost is not a, is kind of low. Uh, however, computation is kind of heavy on the server side. Uh, usually, we assume the server have you know infinite computing power. Uh, for example, compare your cell phone. You can do encryption, but Microsoft Azure can do what kind of uh, whatever computation you want efficiently also. So when you're comparing these two, I usually will think about in real life scenario, MPC requires a cell phone to be online and a lot of data sharing. There's limitation on battery life and uh, uh, data plan, things like that. So the service provider can choose any of these. So if, since we are stuck with HE for this event, the other two are your competitors. And uh, for the user side, you need to consider about uh, things like uh, how to do this encryption. If you encrypt on the fitness band, uh, have you seen those fitness bands? It's uh, super low power, really tiny. Uh, how do you fit the encryption scheme there? Uh, it's not doable. Uh, Apple Watch might be different because I guess stronger, things like that. Um, then you can do encryption on a smartphone. Uh, this is kind of like the following the example and the, the intuition behind our fitness tracker, the Azure Run demo. So if you do the encryption on a smartphone, you have Bluetooth to, to communicate the raw data between your fitness band and your phone, and your phone is much more powerful, and you can do encryption. You can even do a lot of things. You, uh, you, your phone actually, uh, for example, the new iPhones, when you unlock the screen, it runs a neural network. So there's a lot of compu computational power here. Then our question is, what kind of encryption we want to choose? So traditionally, we can do just a block cipher like AES, symmetric encryption, protect your data. That's fine. All you need to do is, uh, if you ever been into a homework encryption for a little bit uh, longer, and uh, many years ago, we kind of choose AES decryption circuit as a benchmark. So you can decrypt an AES ciphertext uh, homomorphically. So basically, I give you an AES encrypted ciphertext. You run homomorphic encryption, the evaluation stage, and then you end up with a homomorphically encry uh, encrypted ciphertext. Uh, so now you can continue to use homomorphic encryption for further computation. This is possible, but there's an extreme cost that AES, circuit, uh, AES decryption circuit requires 40 levels. That means you start with the depth 40 uh, circuit. If you want to do, let's say, 20 uh, uh, layer, uh, 20 levels after the decryption, let's say your, comp your computation requires 20 layers. That means you have to start with 60 layer, uh, 60 depths circuit. Uh, think about how large the parameters are. It just becomes really slow. We've been thinking about uh, research on maybe we can make the block cipher you know, friendly to homomorphic encryption, something required less depth to decrypt. And uh, uh, Daniel Case has actually hit his wider, his group, and focus on low depth block ciphers, which is very interesting. And there are also other ways maybe we can use LWE encryption, something very compact, and that we can just transfer that to a homomorphic encryption 
uh, ciphertext. Or you can just do seal encryption. Like a simple solution is ready. And uh, the issue is you need to, uh, so let's say you want to do seal encryption on your phone without the batching technique, without using a symmetric encryption that you can uh, save half of the ciphertext size when sending data, or without the compression, your bandwidth cost is heavy. Uh, it's not ideal. So when you're thinking about how to do the encryption, you should consider whether you can use all three of them. So that these three really minimize the size of your ciphertext during communication. And if you are, for example, in a really naive setup, you are just ignoring all three of them, we will ask you a question. How large is your ciphertext? How many bits you are encrypting? Maybe you are encrypting a small value, just uh, uh, the distance of your run for 10 minutes. How large can it be? And uh, you are using a whole ciphertext. This is not efficient. And of course, users want some functionality from you. They say, I want to uh, track my running rules. I want to see the intensity of my run. Uh, how well how well I did I do it? Like for example, I was running for one hour. It covers one mile. Uh, it's not a run. Things like that. He knows. He needs to know more about his like data. Uh, then here comes to our computation. The server needs to do these computations. What does the server need to collect? Uh, just for example. Let's say I want to calculate the intense, uh, intensity of your run. What I need to know, I need to know your uh, duration of your run, the speed, and the uh, elevation, because elevation is different from just distance, things like that. And usually, uh, we can just use a linear model to uh, like pre predict the inten intensity. This can be a linear regression or some, some classifier is fine. It's very easy. In fact, uh, I forgot the number, either 70% or 80% of the machine learning models used in industry, they are linear models or simple models. Because very easy and also according to uh, the, the previous talk, is explainable, so it's very, very good. And the linear models are good because uh, the prediction is just uh, linear uh, algebra, so a very homomorphic encryption friendly. So what do you, do you need to collect? Uh, you need to have geolocations, x, y, maybe uh, just on a plane, and uh, z is your elevation, things like that. And based on that, you can calculate uh, your run for each interval. T can be just the timestamp. This is your time span. Um, for example, I can collect your data for every second, or every half a second, or every minute, things like that. Uh, then I have different resolution of your uh, run. Uh, then to calculate distance, we need to run. Uh, we need to uh, solve this thing. Uh, square uh, subtraction, square summation. They are all simple. The square root is troublesome. And how do you, how do you calculate the square root? Uh, any question? Any idea how to how to calculate the square root on the ciphertext? Yeah, yeah, that's, he, he worked here. <laughs> so he know the answer. Uh, you, you can use many ways to approximate that. Uh, you can, for example, maybe you have a really good approximation if you know the input range. If you know the distance is between 0 to 10 meters, uh, you have a pretty good estimation. Uh, if, you, uh, if your uh, input is from 0 to 100 meters, then the approximation might give you more errors. But think about that. You can determine the interval t. For example, t, I collect data every half a second. How far can you run away from? Like for half a second, there's a limitation there. Uh, there's also have a consequence that, uh, for example, this app, if you're, if you're running or if you're like a, riding a bicycle on a car, on a plane, those are different. It has only one use scenario. But it's not entirely a bad thing. I'll explain that later. So now are we clear that we can do this computation using homework encryption? And then the problem is kind of solved. 
see uh, these things are already solved, uh, we need to consider how to batch them, batch the ciphertext. You can, if you just uh, start with these very naive way of uh, encrypting, so every data point, you encrypt them into a ciphertext and send it over to the server. This is just kind of dumb because you're wasting a lot of uh, message slots in the ciphertext. It's not uh, communication like uh, optimized. Or you can just stack them. You collect 1,000 points and send them over together. It's okay, but how do you compute x0 minus x1? You need some rotation, right? It can be done with just one rotation, but still you, you need to start with rotation. Uh, or if you just uh, reform them into this way and you store x together, y together, z together, it doesn't hurt and might be better in terms of computation. Just think about that. These are just the details that uh, uh, drive up the cost. So we are done with this uh, design of the HE evaluator part. Uh, here we have other considerations. As mentioned in yesterday, Arun's talk, they say the Galois key, is, uh, Galois keys are too large, 50 megabytes. You cannot have that on all the devices, things like that. Those are the hidden things you don't see like, uh, at the beginning. Uh, actually, we also met that problem when we were doing the Azure Run demo. So we, we were using some Azure functions to implement that and uh, to send the keys, uh, we can use an URL and URL, uh, Azure server can extract the uh, data from the URL. However, there's also an upper bound on limit, uh, on the size, and uh, it might not be 50 megabytes or maybe smaller. That's the hidden problem. If you really think uh, of a, like a good implementation of your uh, product, you need to think about, okay, what service do I want to use? Let me try that. You do the implementation. Oh, there's, there's a limitation. Like, who knows that? It's not in documentation. Things like that. And also, you cannot repeatedly, repeatedly just update those things because, you know, drive up the communication cost. And uh, how do you solve these key generations? You need to be clear about, in your presentation, also need to be clear about who owns the private key, uh, who would generate the secret key, uh, where it is stored, and then who generate the public key? Do we really need the public key to do encryption? And uh, who stored the public key? How do you publish the public key? And that also goes to realization key and Galois key because they are larger inside, especially Galois key and how to send it over, and using cellular data or just using Wi-Fi or whatever other communication channel. <coughs> and uh, then we need to send ciphertext after encryption. We also, you also need to explain what's the combination cost. Uh, are you sending 1,000 ciphertext for just uh, 1,000 values? Uh, and when do you send them? Are you sending them over, like, uh, for example, during a run? Every data point collected, you send one cyberdex, or every 1,000 data point collected, you send one cyberdex, or after finish the run of your whole day, you send all the data at home up to the server. These are all different. And then when you receive the cyberdex, uh, I don't think we have explained these kind of things uh, yesterday in any talk. Uh, we have a lot of previous uh, proof of concept design, or maybe even in research paper, uh, PSI research paper, PAR papers, a lot of you have uh, looked into those. Uh, when you return the result, you send a query, you want it to be compact, that's a start. When you return the result, you also want to have a compact ciphertext. You don't want to return like a thousand ciphertext as a single result. You want to pack as much information as possible into a single ciphertext. This is another consideration. For example, if the fitness app, I want to give you back your intensity of your run, uh, your health level, your uh, distance, your speed, every speed, all those things. I, I should put, pack everything into a single ciphertext and return it to you when, whenever possible. It's just efficient. Then you can think about designing a proof of concept design. So what do you need? You need the smartphone app, obviously. And uh, first thing, uh, do you know any smartphone app is written in C++? No. Usually you need a wrapper. Uh, and 
uh, we, we actually did that for Android. We actually can compile C on Android phone, and this problem is solved. Then uh, we can reshape the collected data and do the encryption, as I explained before, how to vectorize them, how to store them. And then we need to have the decryption function ready also for you to review, the, to see the data afterwards. And the communication layer, you need to build that. Uh, there's a lot of consideration here because a phone has many communication channels, Wi-Fi, cellular, Bluetooth. Uh, yeah. And uh, visualization, uh, you are designing a, a complete product. It's not about, oh, I make this possible. Uh, you think it's possible. Everything it shows is possible, but you should have some visualization results. I say, uh, what appears on your phone depend like it really matters. You go to the app store or like downloading different applications. Whatever looks better, it just sells better. You cannot just buy. Uh, you can you cannot do anything in command line, right? And uh, on the cloud server side, what do we need? You also need to have a wrapper for like Microsoft SEO if you are developing in a different uh, platform or environment. Then communication cost, you need to uh, solve that. What if you want to have uh, like a thousand virtual machines running on the server just to you know, do the computation? How do you solve the, intern uh, the communication between them? Are they necessary? How do we allocate the resources? It, you don't have to go there. If you are not really, uh, if you don't require like a thousand machines on the cloud, you don't have to explain this. But if you are running really large scale computation on the cloud, you should think about that. How to parallelize, parallelize your computation, make it distributed, things like that. And uh, how to solve this data storage issue? Where do you store the ciphertext? If the ciphertext is stored on one machine, However, it's request, requested by another two machines. How do you send them over? Do you store copies of the ciphertext? There's a lot of optimization to that. And of course, computation, you, you should show that this computation can be done in real life. I don't want to see, uh, let's say, the parameters you choose. I think we are fine with 64K for the degree. Larger than that, it's just really slow and uh, it doesn't make sense sometimes. Let's try to minimize the uh, degree and the parameters. Uh, the challenges, of course, you need to figure out how to do this. Uh, you need to explain how easy it is. You don't really have to do it. Uh, it's better that you do it. I'm using our demo as an example, so we have finished everything here. But in your demo, you, you like for example, if you really need a Python or JavaScript wrapper of um, uh, Microsoft SEO, you need to explain how to do it, or like, because I don't think we have time to do it, actually. And uh, where to store the secret key on phone, you need to explain that. Um, there, are, there are many ways to get secret on a phone. Either you can extract the secret key from some root of trust, from some uh, other secure layers. Or you can uh, store a newly generated secret key safely in some environment. But I don't want you to say that I store my secret key in Dropbox and my phone can see the Dropbox files. This is not a good way to store a secret key. And uh, you need to show that you have really removed the inf a location information from the app. You are collecting geolocation, you encrypt them, you send them over. When you send it over, you have your geolocation attached to the communication. You, if you don't see that or if you didn't uh, solve that problem, you are still leaking your geolocation. It just, uh, uh, that's a really bad design. It's just, it, it is a serious bug. Then, uh, when do you send the data? Think about while you're running. You're running for one hour. Along with the run, your phone is always talking to the server, sending data. Uh, after you finish, you don't know how to get home. You're, you don't have battery anymore. Like, uh, this is a big problem. And the uh, solutions are you can, after you finish the run, you can upload the data all at once. Or after you go home, you initial the like, uh, upload. 
Or let's say we can do only when you request your running information, we encrypt, upload the data, and retrieve the data back. For that problem, uh, for that solution, you need to think about how long do I need to wait after I upload data to get the result. And then it's a computation cost on the server. I upload the data, I'm just sitting there uh, after 15 minutes, oh, I see the run. That's not reasonable. You don't sell such a product. And target users. This is actually uh, uh, more uh, easier. So uh, if you think about fitness app, it's just what does it attract? Your geolocations, timestamps, uh, analyze just about distance, speed, those things. What can you do with those? Uh, runners, for sure. You can also do truck, uh, like create uh, something on the car for the truckers. Uh, for example, uh, after you are driving for 10 hours or like non nonstop, you can predict that, okay, he's pretty tired. This driver is pretty tired. I should send a reminder to him that, uh, okay, you, sh you should have a rest. Uh, why it requires privacy? That's your problem. Because not all the truck drivers <laughs> require that kind of privacy. But what if you're um, carrying a load of uh, valuable assets? They say you're carrying weapons or uh, like some very, uh, like if you're driving a, like a, a, a full van of money, like in those scenarios, you don't want to be tracked. And uh, there's a real scenarios actually. It can happen. And uh, things like that. Or uh, maybe drivers or passengers or insurance companies, they say, I want to know how well my Uber driver is uh, every time I took the Uber but I don't want to review my you know, uh, daily commute pattern. So I can use some app like that to uh, analyze how well the driver drives. Uh, is it an offensive or defensive? How fast does he drive? Is, it always, well, is he always speeding? Things like that. Uh, it can be useful. And uh, for insurance company, I can also rate the drivers. Let's say if you're like a really bad driver, you're always speeding, I want to give you a higher policy. Uh, I want you to pay more for your like policy, or uh, for people who drive really nicely every day and they de they do deserve a, a lower price, we can offer that to them, and it requires the tracking of of their driving pattern, and it requires machine learning to build that price model. Uh, then also privacy is kind of necessary because you don't want your whole life exposed to uh, an insurance company. Those are, those are all the same technology, same model. So you can build the same thing, uh, same POC and work in all three or four scenarios. And you can come up with other scenarios. What about something without a car or running? Uh, there's other examples too. Or for example, we have shown a chest, uh, chest x-ray demo. Uh, Christine showed that. We can uh, do a scan of your chest x-ray uh, and uh, we encrypt some of the features and send it over to the cloud to do the analysis for you. This is the same with the phishing detection. It's send a picture, uh, you get a picture, do featureization on the client side, send the features to the server, server do analysis, return you the result. This is exactly the same. Even the model can be the same. It's just image recognition. Oh, I'm saying it's just uh, the same design of products. Uh, the, the technology is the backbone. They can be the same, but your scenario can be very different. You can choose a very promising one, very uh, one with high business impact, or one really make the world better. And then, for example, how to show your impact. It's usually good to say that, for example, 80% of accidents on highways are caused by tired driving, things like that. Those are great, really good starting point. Yeah, yeah, for any reasons you can show that, okay, this is an important technology and I solve this issue. But when you explain to us, uh, first, you cannot use made up numbers and uh, everyone has the internet, we can all check. And uh, second, with this number, just make it more convincing. And uh, we might ask questions about, for example, what about the other drivers? Uh, what, what, 
if, uh, for example, if you solve this question, but you uh, uh, increase the portion of the other kind of accident, or you increase the occurrence of other ac uh, accidents, that's really bad. You have to explain that this is, okay, our technology is really good to solve this issue, and there's no hidden complica uh, complications. And uh, you should think about your com competitors. There's also a way to do things without encryption, and uh, I explained that this can be some scenario that is not possible. You really need the privacy to be protected. And, uh, or you can host your own service, like Microsoft can do that, Amazon can do that, uh, not all companies can do that. Maybe Uber can buy, uh, can use other companies' server, but still that data goes to other companies. Can they do that? Sometimes bound by the law, hospitals cannot do that, for, for example. You cannot store your patient data on someone else's server, or in uh, or if your company in China or in other countries that you have the boundary of the uh, of your data, so whatever collected inside that country cannot leave, cannot go outside. That's another issue. <coughs> and uh, other two competitors, we have covered that already. I wouldn't go too deep to uh, SGX because there's not a really fair comparison. We cannot say they are bad because you know, there are loopholes you, that you might need to fix over the time. But also, we'd want to say that uh, they provide much better performance compared to HTE because HTE is computational heavy and HTE pro provide provable uh, security. So it's really hard to compare these two. Uh, if you find a good reason that make, making TE not possible, well, that's perfect. I would like that, <laughs> but uh, you don't have to go that deep in your presentation. There's also another, uh, another threat. So there can be people making use of your technology. So any, any technology have the good side and bad side. Uh, I want to see a complete demonstration of your idea that you, sh you cannot just consider, okay, this. Uh, 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 chemistry physics is wonderful. You, you know, you can build these uh, atomic bombs that you know so powerful, and you don't you, you choose not to see that how destructive it is. <clears throat> you cannot do that. Uh, there's always two sides of securities. One is privacy. The other side is like secrecy. So if you are, uh, if you are, for example, if you are doing something inside your room. You don't want other people to open the door and see what you're doing. That's your privacy. But if you are, let's say, uh, smoking weed in your room, and you don't want people to open the door and caught you, that's secrecy. So there are two sides, and I want you to consider both sides. For example, if someone used your technology to track you know, drug trafficking, like I'm cartel, I want to track all my load package, and uh, I want the data to be encrypted so no one can you know, find all my rules. I also want to do analysis on the successful delivery rate. Uh, then I think those fitness bands can work in that way. Uh, we can just change the, the features and uh, create a different model and provide a service for them. They can make use of it. That's something you need to prevent. You need to say that, okay, we do not allow that by doing, let's say, I don't allow the model to be changed, things like that. And then uh, summarizing what we have covered, like the uh, four pillars, the uh, novelty. Uh, there wasn't anything similar in market back then when we do the Azure Run, the fitness app. Uh, but hopefully, like uh, something you come up with is new to the judges because fitness app is no longer new to us now. And the uh, sound is, <coughs> You just need to be clear on what you're protecting. I am protecting my geolocation. Uh, whatever you do, my geolocation is obviously encrypted. You don't get my location. You don't know where I live, where I go to. However, do you know if I'm working out? You do know that because uh, if, I sh if you see that I'm uploading data, it means I'm using your app and I'm doing runs and uh, how many data points you collected, you know the duration of my exercise. 
If that's not a concern, it is fine. Uh, you might not be able to protect everything. Uh, at least your geolocation is secure. Or if you really want to protect everything, let's say I don't want the app to know that I'm running every day for just five minutes and uh, uh, things like that. Or I run one hour, but uh, uh, so I run one hour every week and uh, the data points are not that many, things like that. You don't want the app to know that, you can find other solutions, but you need to explain that. Let's say every day we will uh, pack some weird stuff, dummy po data points, and pack, uh, send them to the server. Or I upload data every week. There are other ways to protect that. Yeah, but you need to be clear on that. We, we might ask you questions that say, oh, if you want to protect a user's activity and uh, they review something about the activity. If you say, I want to protect user's geolocation, then okay, you're fine, you're safe. And uh, yeah, feasibility, we, we had a demo, so it's totally feasible. But for you, you should explain it or show a demo. Right. And uh, impact. Uh, some technology can be beneficial to the insurance company, the drivers, better price fitting, fairer price for drivers, and uh, more profitable to insurance companies, things like that. Those are all impacts. Yeah, I think that's it. Do you have a better idea of uh, what they're going to present now? If you check those uh, tech pitch videos, they usually start with 80% of uh, highway accidents are caused by tight driving. Uh, some news report showing that uh, this is a serious, serious issue in the United States. And uh, we have... Uh, Think about it over the past few years. We have scientists from all different academies, and uh, we come up with some solution that, okay, I can send a reminder to the truck drivers when you should take a rest. Uh, introducing this product. Uh, this is the brand new technology that uh, uh, helps the safe driving and uh, bring safety to the whole community. How do we do that? We just demonstrate the, the device, and plug into the car, and uh, the driver automatically get a reminders when they are tired. What, uh, how does how does it work in behind? You are collecting geolocations, your speed, you encrypt them, upload the server. We choose, let's say, Microsoft Azure as a as a customer. Uh, we build our service on Microsoft Azure, and they have a good pricing model. We do computation there, data are returned. All these communications are compact, and uh, there's very minimum latency to prevent this uh, dangerous. When you get tired, you get alert in within one minute, rather than one hour, things like that. This explain your product, and then you say, we project that, uh, uh, for example, 90% of the drivers will have this problem that uh, this will help all of them. We try to keep the device cheap so that all the trafficking companies, all the transportation company can have that enabled on your car. It does not cut more energy to your car. It does not drain the battery. And uh, let's think about how many transportation companies in the country, and that's the market cap. How many competitors do we have? There are people who you know do not require uh, encryption get rid of them, we have maybe another 30% of the market share left, and uh, we can target for, let's say, garment-owned uh, garment transportation companies or some other entities that does garment work because they require the secrecy of the privacy of their driving roads. And here's our uh, customers, target users and talk about competitors, about other technologies all we offer is provable security. If you use other technologies, might not work as well. Uh, as well, you have higher communication costs. You need to pay more for each truck, or uh, it might be broken at some point. Mm, can be subpoenaed by the Supreme Court to offer them the data, things like that. And this is like the summary of everything and. Uh, 
uh, you, you basically explain all pillars here. Usually that's a, like a template page, uh, a tech page. You understand? Yeah. Is, is that just a question? <laughs> yeah, who are the judges? Like, oh, yeah. uh, judges will be uh, me, Kim, Yongsu, uh, Christine, and maybe Shri Khan, second speaker. Any other questions? So when it comes to the novelty, like a lot of, you know, different use cases maybe have a very similar like back end. You can just kind of like tweak what you're going to use it for. So is there like a way to weight like novelty and like a new technique on the back end versus like I just applied this in a way that nobody else has thought of? Like, you know, like which of those is more what you're looking for in terms of novelty? I, I think we consider this thing as a whole. So uh, suppose you came up with a nice scenario with known technology, but the scenario is pretty brand new, uh, breaking through and uh, a game-changing, world-changing idea that is novel. If you have, a, for example, you are doing a fitness app again with a different way of doing analysis, different technology as a backbone, that's novelty as well because you're providing the technology side of that. You are changing this fitness app industry. That's okay too. Any more questions? <laughs> 